the final exam is up December 4th. Yay! I know what you're thinking. Miss Fernandes, I'm not done with the class yet. I still have work to do. We all have work to do. I know that. I opened up all the dates on the uh, videos and even the discussion boards and the journals so that you can fill in if you've missed from behind. But the reason why the, dis the final exam is up so early is to give students a chance to even look at it to calm them down. This is a nerve-wracking time, and I am so behind on grading. I am weeks behind on watching videos, which is my treat. I'm in the weeds, and I know it's very scary when you think, does my teacher even know that I'm here? Like, yes, I know you're here. And I do post the folders every week so you know I'm alive. I only have five public speaking classes, and I say that because... I, I remember one time having nine public speaking classes. This is back in the day when I was younger and I was uh, teaching at different colleges and I just loved it, but they were all face to face. Now five online is a lot of just little details and also hanging in there with students who are trying to do this class from their phone, which I have no idea how you could even think that's possible, but young people have innovative ways, that's for sure. And I'm not criticizing, but it has caused some problems. And then my other um, classes that I'm teaching this semester all are writing components. They're not oral communication, they're written communication. And I gave so many of those students breaks as far as time limits are concerned. And now I'm getting flooded with really more papers than I could possibly read and not go a little crazy, And even though they're a pleasure. So I've been, my eyes are all puffy because I've been reading all night, all day. But this weekend I'm devoting to my public speaking classes and to get through the joy of watching and critiquing and um, giving grades. Most students are getting 80, 90s, and 100s on their videos, meaning you have all the components in there. But the other part that you don't really get any credit for because 100 is 100 is the great heart and also the wonderful creativity and spirit that's going into the videos. And you can watch the progress from your introduction to now. You can watch your classmates' progress. You know, neurobiology says that we are never the same moment to moment we are growing. And our neurobiological uh, impulses and reactions have all grown, n even if you're not taking a class. But when you are taking a class, you can see it. You can see the changes, more confident, clearer voice, having more fun with the camera. These are keepers. These are keepsake keepers. So I know we're not done. But if you go to the very bottom where the folders are, you see the very bottom, it says final exam. And then I think it says December 4th through December 18th. Having said how I've allowed extensions for my other classes on their papers, and I am for our classes too, getting your work in. Once December 18th comes at 11.59 p.m., it's over. It's over. So now is the time to have extra time to do. Not then. It's over. And what happens is it's a hard stop. Everything stops. And no more videos, no more discussion boards, no more journals. You're like, final exam's done. It's like, oh, all right, what a good feeling. But then what I go into, I go into um, grading mode. Now I'm grading all along, but that's when I take time to look at every single student. So I'll go, I'll say, Joyce Fernandes, all right, week one, did she get her discussion board in, in the time, did she do the discussion board? Did she get it in the time period? Full credit, right? Because it's attendance. Uh, the introduction, did she do it? Next one, like, all right, the journals, did you do all four of them? Um, so you have the discussion boards weekly, you have the journals four times, you have all the presentations. So of all those are checked off, I'm saying this student is in good shape, but I check the dates. That's what changes this for some people. And that's why I say do not trust the grade center on our computer because it's not set up for those subtleties, for those human element that a teacher will look at. And I do give um, every grade in this class. I know there'll be D's and C's and B's and A's and a minuses and B pluses and A pluses. It all depends on where you fall into that grid. If you know, you can check, you can figure out your own grade. If you know you have been doing the discussion board always in the same week, you're going to get full credit. If you know you've been doing same thing with the journals at the line time, you're going to get full credit. 
if you know you've been doing all your presentations and not all of them are graded yet, but many people are getting 90s and 100, you say, well, that's pretty good. I'm going to get an A for this, right? Yes. So put it all together and then the final exam, which is 15% of your grade. So you could say, I'm on an A track, I'm on a B track. And there's no reason to think that you won't receive that. Once my grades go in, uh, usually you have 72 hours so 72 hours from December 18th, they should be in and they go in. When you receive your grade, if you want to challenge me or, or present an argument, I'm open to it. But don't ask me now. Now is my my uh, time to really get involved in, like get out of these weeds. But also you can check it yourself, but it'll be at the end. And I have no problem if three days after the final exam, if you say, Ms. Fernandes, I don't understand my grade, and I will try to resolve it with for you. Or even during winter session break, it's never too late to change a student's grade if there's a good reason. So you can ask my reason, like, why did I get a C minus? Why did I get an A plus? Well, you probably wouldn't challenge an A plus, but why did I get this? Uh, and I'll look back and I keep, I keep, I keep volumes of paper on all our, I have checklists, your names and everything. So I'll go back and look. Does that mean I never make a mistake? No, it doesn't mean that at all. So the double check is good. Most students are pretty comfortable with the grades I give because they say, oh, I didn't think I was going to get that. As I do, I do look at um, special occasions. For example, I say that I want you to have that um, discussion board every week through the week, but everyone can have a slip up. And so when I say, oh, they one time they didn't do it, we won't think about that. We'll go to the next week and see how that went. So there is that human element. That's the subtlety. That's the um, sweet spot that makes it so much different than just listening you know, to what a computer says. But the final exam is a computerized final exam. I set it up for multiple choice, multiple answer. And take your time answering. There are 50 questions. And I'm not sure if it's week 10, but I know some weeks ago I sent you a video of explaining the final exam. The big thing is, is as you go along, save your answer. You'll see it says save your answer, save your answer, just keep saving your answer. At the very bottom of the final exam, it says save your answers and submit or save and submit, but the word submit is there. Do not press that until you're completely done. If you send that away, you've, you, you, you finished your exam. So please do not do that. And you may finish it at any time that you like. If you finish it tonight, go ahead. But I'm not expecting it. I'm not expecting it until December 18th. So please take your time. Do not forget it. It's there. But it should alleviate some stress of wondering, what is she going to ask us? What was I supposed to be learning? What, what kind of questions? It's a multiple choice, multiple answer. I think there's only two questions that are actually multiple answer. The rest are all multiple choice. And pick the best answer. And the what what it what how it's formatted, I give you the definition that's from our chapter in our textbook, in our glossary. And then I say which one is it? Some of them are very obvious, but others they could be close to each other. So you go through, save your answers, and when you go through the second time, then double check it for yourself. Go back to the chapters, look for the right correct answer. Some people I know have been reading the chapters. I can tell when you ask me different questions in emails, you're asking specifically about what the author's saying. Others, maybe you've just been skimming them and some of the um, some of the uh, vocabulary has not been that weird to you and you say, oh no, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense. It wasn't meant to be a memorized reading of these chapters. It was just applying the skills, applying some of the um, foundational work that's part of the communication discipline. And you have been by delivering your presentations and your answers in the discussion board and your journal. So you're in it. You've been in it. So I'm very excited to say that the final is up and nothing else changes. It's, that's the final. I know that there's still work to do in the folders, speeches, and 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 um, journals, right? So and you'll be doing those. Oh, another thing I want you to say. Well, I wanted maybe to say one more thing. I should take notes, right? I told you to take notes. Yeah, it's important that, that you know the final is up. You still have work to do. Oh, uh, yeah, how you figure out your grade. You can figure that out. Oh, I know. The voice threads. I've had more than one student have an Eureka moment this week. When I made that list up uh, maybe a week or so ago or two weeks ago in an email, and I posted 
all the students who I have received the work from, that was the good list, all the introductions, all the in, in the news, all the information, all the uh, persuasion, right? That was for you to see your name there, say, okay, she has my presentation. It's good. It's there. If you don't see your name on that list, but you think or you know you've done it, there's a problem. And I, this is where the phone comes in. I had a student, a couple of students who were using their phone and they had the VoiceThread app. And the app said, you, you have posted your presentations, but what was not done, they were not shared or submitted. I'm not sure what the word is. Are you submitting or shared? But it wasn't connecting to our course space. This course was designed to do on a computer, not on a phone. So if you're clever enough to figure out how you can do some of it on your phone, go ahead. But I'm telling you, it wasn't designed to be on a phone. So this is where some of the problems have been. So if you don't see your name and you say, I know I did my speech, you can resubmit it by pressing that um, share or submit or go on your computer and do it or call the site lab or email them on Monday and ask them to help you do it. Because all of a sudden, I would get four videos from a student that I didn't have them on my list because I didn't have anything. And I'm so glad we figured it out because what a shame to have done all that work. And because of a technological detail, your teacher's not getting it. So how you can tell as well is you know on the voice thread, there's always one voice thread in the folder that says post here. Then there's the second one on the bottom. That's the collective. That's where all the voice threads fall into from the beginning of our class together. Look for your voice thread there. Look for it. If you don't see it among everyone else's, I don't see it either. So that's how you can tell. If it didn't, if it didn't make it to our collective, I don't have it. Even though your voice thread app says it's there you haven't shared or submitted and so that's one reason why uh, some people haven't been successful on voice thread others had different glitches and um, believe me I've had strange things happen this semester too that I say I didn't touch anything I don't know why it one at one time one of my journals was taken down and it said instructor error they said I took it down I didn't touch it so I went to the site lab and they said it can happen these glitches happen so we've got two weeks to go through to make sure you've done all the work you think you you that you have done make sure i see it and then you'll feel really good because once Oct uh, october once december 18th happens hard stop that's it and you don't want to get an f you really don't but if you notice that 50 percent of the class are the videos right and so you don't do those videos and you do everything else 50 is not a passing grade so you don't want that to happen and why would what you won't let that happen so save yourself check on your technology make sure I'm getting it if you don't see it in that collective I don't have it and I don't I don't go after students anymore because I found out that some students are well aware that they're not doing the work and I'm just a big embarrassment. So when I send out the good list of all those names, it wasn't to embarrass anyone because I don't think anyone's looking to say, hey, so-and-so's name's not there. But it's to give you a heads up. Because if I waited to the end and then I submitted an F for your grade, then on December 24th, you're saying, what happened? I got an F. I did everything. Not if I don't see it and if the class doesn't see it. You know, these details are important. They really are. It's like voting details, paying your bill details. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And I can't read your mind or you can read my mind. So when we have these structures, we need to align with them as much as you might think it's silly. Like, I don't know why, you know, like it happened. I, I'm not saying that I like the system, but it is the system. It's like not passing in a paper to me in person and I said I never got your paper but you left it on your desk or something you know and then you think and I did it I did it I I believe you and then I can see when the video was um, created to make sure it was in the week that it was supposed to be and then you get you know you get full credit for everything okay so I'm in the weeds granted don't get nervous I'll be watching your video soon I'm so sorry for this delay you're actually the you're the, like the cherry on the top of my week. I love to watch the videos, but I ended up getting myself into a situation with these 
you know, literally, literally papers that are like, oh man, I can't, and every word is precious. So, you know, I'm working at it, and I'm trying. And I know when you get in the weeds, the same sort of thing can happen, but we work our way out, and in somehow or other, it's all going to be okay. And Christmas is coming, and next semester is coming. And you might want to take a winter session class. I don't know, but those are very concentrated. I do not teach winter session any longer. I don't teach winter session for this school. I do for another school. Um, they don't have... We have it so short. Some schools have four weeks or five weeks. I'll do that. But ours are so tiny. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing it. So um, I just hope you're doing well. I hope you're healthy. It's been a, um, this, we're, we're in the middle of a deadly pandemic. This is historical, unprecedented. I hate that term. You hear it so much. It's a cliche now. But at the same time, it's true. It's our first time going through this. So Give yourself credit. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Uh, mourn the loss of people in this country that have lost their lives. For you people who have studied, for you students who have studied history, you know what pandemics can do. They can wipe out huge, huge populations of people all in once. And so why, why mask wearing and social distancing became something that people were offended by. I do not know. I'm assuming they're not that educated as far as history is concerned to know that this has happened before, it's happening now, and we know more information now to protect ourselves. It's a shame of all that pushback. Before you were born, we had seatbelt laws. When seatbelts became mandatory in cars. People were flipping out. That's against my constitutional right to wear a seatbelt. No one's going to tell me. Now, I know there are people who do not wear seatbelts right now. I know that. But it's still against the law. It became binding. It became a law to save to save lives and also to save the first responders from watching your body parts go all over Route 88. You know, there's nothing like being at the first to a scene of an accident when someone hasn't worn their seatbelt. They don't get, they don't, they're not alive. They're out the window. They're, 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 it's awful. So think of the first responders. If you don't think about yourself with the seatbelt, same thing with the mask. Wear the mask. Protect yourself, protect other people. It's a kind thing to do, uh, so please be healthy. And I know some of you have jobs that you, you have to go into the line of fire. You are in the medical. You are. You're right there helping others. So please do your part. We're getting through this pandemic. I don't even know what the number now is. Over 300,000 Americans are dead, and they keep talking about the projections of how many people will be dead by the time this pandemic is over. Don't you be one of them and not your family. Like, just like, just be as cautious as you can. I mean, anything can happen. I could come down with COVID. Who knows? But you want to um, lessen the odds. All right. I preach to you after every video. And that's why some people, like, don't watch my videos. But I hope you're watching it. Final exam is up. I'm happy to say. Have a good weekend, everyone.